Good morning. My name is Lucifer Keener. I'm a captain with the Oceanside Fire Department for the city of Oceanside, California. We're actually here for an EMT info session. Probably for the past five minutes, if you've been logged in, you've seen uh, my facial gestures, you've probably seen PowerPoints, uh, you've probably seen, uh, you're wondering why we've been muted. To give you an understanding of why we're doing this, it is for you. It is for the applicant that is considered becoming an Oceanside Fire Department EMT for the city of Oceanside. Uh, we have this, this idea, this information session, it kind of started as a concept of which we would bring you in. We would explain the opportunity that exists. We explain what the job looks like. We do it hands-on, which is obviously, as our profession says, what we do best. We assess patients. We talk to them. So we would need hands-on. Uh, if you haven't noticed, things change a little bit. And Zoom is going to be a platform that we're going to expand into. This would happen to be our first webinar. And you happen to be our first participants in a webinar. The difference between what we are doing now and what has been done in the past is we would take a video. We would have multiple opportunities to look at that video, to kind of clean it up, to make sure that the information we're getting out to you is, is specific and dialed in for you. A webinar is not that, it's live. So what you're gonna see today is us being live. Uh, we're gonna do our best to work through the information that we have for you, but this live also will give you an ability to respond back to us. Uh, we will not have you raising hands, your face will not be shown up on the video, what we're going to have you do is the ability to chat. You may have already received a chat uh, back from us, but that is your ability to reach out and ask questions and our ability to answer those questions. I'm gonna introduce you to the panel that's here with us today. Uh, my name is obviously Lucifer Keener, uh, Operations Captain, City of Oceanside. We also have Tiara Garfield. She is a Senior Office Specialist with the Oceanside Fire Department. We have Ama Sanchez. She's Human Resources for the City of Oceanside. We have Jose McNally, he is our fire training captain for the Oceanside Fire Department. And we have Jason Baker, he's a firefighter medic, also with the Oceanside Fire Department training. And he's going to be instrumental when you get hired in training you to become the best EMT that we can possibly have. So let's go for the presentation overview so you can have an expectation of what we're asking and how we're going to handle this. Our overview is, is going to break it apart in a couple pieces, there are four. Um, the simple piece is that we're going to discuss what it is to become an OFD EMT. And then we're going to actually look at what you do to apply as an OFD EMT in the application process. We're also going to talk about the PAT. Uh, we're going to talk about the skills. We're going to talk about uh, the interview. We're going to kind of give you from the idea that you haven't already been considering the job to what it would take to actually get through and hired on the job. Now we know for this session, all of you probably found this link on the job bulletin. So you have already read this. What that is for us is once we finish this live session, we are going to save this video and we are going to post it onto our website so that in the future, people will be able to look at this to kind of get a better information session. We may continue doing these information sessions. So how that's going to work is why we are walking through a slide presentation and discussing uh, website links that we'll have up on this monitor so you can see. We're also going to have areas of where if there's questions, we will answer them. Do not save all your questions to the end. Um, recognize though, as we go through it, there are going to be pieces of which we will eventually get to. So if there's a question that we know we're gonna to get to, we may not answer it at the time that you submit it. We'll answer it when we get to the next section where it's at. Use the chat feature to continue to reach out to us so that we do know, and it is as interactive as we can be to get the information out to you because that's our entire point for today. The webinar format I kind of already explained for you, but I'm gonna to touch on to just one more base is like I said, this is live. So, you know, we're, if we have any technical glitches, I apologize now, um, but the intent is to make it so that it is more interactive than just a video that you press play on, um, especially as you are participants. So it is uh, as much as you interact with us, so we're gonna be able to do the same for you. Okay, let's begin. So, what does it take to be a Oceanside EMT? Can we advance the slide? There's our first little technical thing. Uh, we're gonna advance the slide to the next one. Ah, perfect. And then we'll go to the website on the EMT program. So this is the Oceanside Fire Department's website. This EMT program that you see up in here, more than likely when you actually looked at the uh, job application and you saw this link, you were directed to our website right here. 
The intent of this website is to give you any time throughout the year kind of an, an update on where we sit as an EMT or where our EMT program sits within the fire department. It will give you some of the basic information that you both saw in the job bulletin, but it can give you some more specifics, like what station do the ambulance happen to be stationed at that have EMTs on there? Um, are they stationed for 24 hours? Are they stationed for or 12 hours? Is there a part-time ring right there? It also will have links in there. Those links are what we are covering today. So as we scroll down towards the bottom in there, you'll see options to either complete an interest card. You'll see what's called a checklist to become an OFD AMD our EMT, sorry about that. You'll see more information about preparing to become an OFD EMT. And obviously we'll keep the video of the PAT. What changes after today is this information session will also go on the website below that uh, physical agility test. So all of the information that we're fairly covering today with the exception of obviously us talking to you and giving you any more uh, insight is going to be on our website. And it will stay there throughout the year so that as you become more interested or if, if you were to return and you're wondering what our update is or where we currently are in the MT, if we're going to be hiring, what that looks like, you'll find that on our website. That's why we begin with the website is to look at that. So what do we know about the city of Oceanside? Well, as you're on our website, I would hope that if you're interested, you would start looking at Oceanside's website and it'll give you a lot of information. I'm going to give you a little summary here. Oceanside happens to be 42 square miles. It has to be a coastal city that has over three miles of beachfront. It has a harbor, has a population of 176,000. Why is that important is because as one of the 1,000 employees that is tasked to take care of the public good of the citizens and its visitors, you're going to become one of those people when you get hired here that is going to be working for the public. The fire department, which is where you will be assigned to, we are the second busiest fire department rescue uh, agency within San Diego County. We average 22,000 calls a year. You'll see later on when we get in the slide that we average around 9,000 transports. You as an EMT will be assigned into the fire department and the operations division to be on an ambulance to provide care and transport. So as you're looking through this list up here and you see that it says ambulances, that's where you will eventually be signed at. Let's go back to the slide. So let's talk about what you must have. The job bulletin will have in there a lot of information. And when we get to that section, which will be in a little while, we'll start talking about what you have to have to apply and then what you'll have to have to be an EMT on the job. To, uh, you know, what you have to have to apply is right here. You're gonna have to have a class C driver's license with an ambulance driver. And we have the word certificate in it. Um, we'll talk about why that's changed. You know, some people may have something called an endorsement that would be accepted too. But the current California driver's license ambulance certificate is what the DMV is issuing now. You'll also have to have a current EMT-1 certification issued by the state of California. And you'll also have to have a current CPR certification. There are agencies that issue those. They are AHA. Um, there are others. You'll see a list of those within the state links that you see below. And those are required. Why we put those in here is we have no control over these. Um, these are set by the state of California or by a local emergency uh, EMS agency, which is a county-based system. And they are things we, do not, we are not able to control for you. You must have those on your own. So what we've done below is if you don't have those, or if you're wondering what they are, we have provided the links to where you can find that information. We're gonna look at one of those links, which is the website for health and human services for EMS. We're gonna zoom in on this EMT initial certification. And we're gonna talk about the importance of this when you're looking for this. Now, the state of California occasionally changes how it processes things. One of the changes is that the California EMT-1 is no longer controlled by the state of California. You cannot go to the California state website for EMS and apply for a California EMT-1 certification. What you will have to do is you will have to go through a list, or sorry, you'll have to go through the county of which you are looking to be employed or that you have been employed, and you'll have to go through their agency to get your initial California certification. This is the website for San Diego County right here. And as you can see in there, it says, how do I become an EMT with the County of San Diego? We'll become an EMT. You'll need to successfully complete an EMT course. They give you a link to where that is. And they'll say that once you have successfully completed an EMT course, you must apply for certification in California. Uh, looking at multiple places like Riverside, Orange County, and other ones, all of them have very similar language to that, which means that you will have to apply for California. Normally, you apply in the county of which you're currently living at. 
you, they have the process in here, what you need to do for that and the links. So that is how you go to get your California, your, sorry, your California certification is you have to be able to submit it through a local agency to get that. Are there any questions on that that's been posted? None. Okay, good. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. The second thing we put a link down here for you is actually the DMV and that's the ambulance drivers. When we're looking at the ambulance driver certification, you'll notice as we scroll down a little bit that the first thing that this DAO has changed to is certifications and endorsements. And they put in big bold here that a certification is issued separate document that a driver must have and an endorsement is this. What it used to be considered is the ambulance, which is the first one, and there was an endorsement. So if you've had, a, uh, if you've had an ambulance endorsement for a while, that's not unusual, but that would have been apparently two to three years ago. The new way they do is they give you a certificate for it. Um, obviously, either of those two are acceptable. Uh, right now, as we start moving forward, if you were into now, you would be looking for a certificate. The DMV obviously controls how that looks. Um, so here's the process of how to ask the DMV and to be able to take this here. Any questions on the ambulance driver's endorsement or certificate? None? Okay. There are two questions. Is a California driver's license required to get the an ambulance endorsement? I recently moved here and only have a driver's license in another state. To apply for the uh, EMT position, uh, you do not have to have a state of California driver's license, but you will have to have that at time of appointment, I believe. I was going to refer that to Alma. Uh, currently, a California Class C driver's license with an ambulance driver's uh, certificate is required upon application. So we ask that you uh, refer back to the job bulletin. Um, unfortunately, if you do not have a California driver's license, um, you would not be eligible this time around. Um, but again, if you want to review the job bulletin and you can um, give us a call if you have any further questions, but unfortunately that is a requirement of this position. We have two additional questions. If I am certified in another county besides San Diego, will I need to apply for reciprocity to be licensed as an EMT for the county of San Diego? In the job bulletin, uh, which like I said, when you see the job bulletin, we're gonna get into that a little further. You'll see it stated there that the job bulletin for the state or county of San Diego is required upon completion of the EMT Academy. If you've gone through another county, what you want to make sure of is that you do have your California EMT-1 certification already through them. Uh, so what that is the, what we'll need the copy of to actually get the county of San Diego's process. Uh, I'll also refer it to Alma, but the way I believe it is, is that would be once you have completed the academy, that is a requirement that you have it then, not for application. That's correct. Okay. We have one more question. What if you have an EMT certification from another state and are still waiting for the County of San Diego to process it? Um, so you would need, okay, so as long as you have a California EMT uh, card, we will accept that. Uh, the county certification um, needs to be provided before the start or before the end of the EMT Academy. So you're, you would be okay. Uh, but the EMT uh, state license, we would need a, um, at the time of application, the county uh, license uh, can wait. So as soon as you could, prov oh, if you're hired, you can provide it to us then, but it's not um, required at the time of application. This question had a second part. Also, if I have a CEVO ambulance driver certificate, should I still get an endorsement from the DMV? I'll take that. Yes. Uh, if it uh, says it's a requirement in there, and that's when we start talking about uh, why when we put this PowerPoint in here, what, we'll, what we cannot cover is every single issue of, of opportunity of what it possibly could look like. Um, to those, you can obviously reach out to ARHR uh, after this information session, but 
if we put it in here, um, the intent is that, yes, that is, that is a requirement that we would expect to have before the close of the application. Um, and so if it does say that we need the California driver's endorsement, if there's some other thing that is equivalent or to it, that would not be something we were familiar with because obviously California controls that. Uh, so my suggestion would be to be, reach what the requirements are. And the second part of that? Uh, I have two more questions. Okay. I have someone asking for a confirmation. Is an EMTI the same as a National Registry EMTB? I can take that. Uh, no. Uh, the term, what we're looking for is not the National Registry EMT or an EMTI. What we really need you to have is the state of California's uh, EMT-1 certification. Um, now, can you be an EMT advanced in the state of California? Uh, if you go to the state of California's website under the EMS, you will find a registrar there, which you can look to see what are the requirements that they have for certification for California. You have to have that requirement, and you also will need to have that EMT-1 certification by the application's closing And I have one more question. Can you please clarify, does the ambulance certificate or endorsement need to be held at the time of application or at the time of appointment? Um, at the time of application, the only thing that uh, there's wiggle room on is the county's EMT certification. Uh, that is the only item that may be obtained at a later time. However, um, everything else will be uh, is required at the time of application. Okay. Great questions. And we know that, and like I said, that's part of this environment that we're looking at is this webinar. It gives you the ability to reach to us. Same thing that there's sometimes going to be individual issues or individual questions that may be asked. And, you know, once, even when we close this down, you'll see a link or you'll see an ability to email and to reach out uh, via a telephone call for any other specific questions. This is just to try to give you a broad overview of it. So the questions you're asking, the information that you're given, that's super helpful for us. Anything else? Okay. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. We're going to start moving forward. Great questions. So once we've gone through this list, like I said, this is what everyone must have and maintain. That means that also once you're hired, you have to maintain those qualifications right there, plus the San Diego County. So let's talk about the duties. So obviously, like I said, with this uh, webinar, we knew that you're in the process of applying for us. So now we want to touch on what our duties are. EMT in this one is a 911 system responding to medical emergencies on an ambulance. They render aid to patients, first aid, they participate in resuscitation, and they transport patients to hospitals. They maintain the ambulance, they perform apparatus maintenance, they ensure proper supplies and stocking, and they participate in station maintenance. What separates an OFD EMT position from the majority of EMT positions is number one, that ambulance happens to be located in one of the eight fire stations we have in the city. Uh, OFD is a high paced, busy 911 system. We do run 22,000 calls a year. We have over 9,000 ambulance transports annu annually. And our EMTs must be able to stay calm in the stress situations while performing top-notch customer service. We do focus on making sure that an EMT in Oceanside is honing their skills for their next position. And what we say there is our goal is having EMTs perform their skills and assessment, including transportation of the BLS patients. It's because this experience is invaluable in setting the progression of a course of an EMT and ensuring that we have the rights to resources available for the city. This ability for you to be able to participate on a call, not just putting gear on somebody, not just taking blood pressures, but actually practicing your skills, practicing your assessments for the community that we serve is essential to why OFD EMT is a, is a great position to be in. That's what our duties entail. Can we uh, advance to the next slide? So what is this current position? Every OFD EMT is limited to a maximum of three years in their position. All EMT personnel will benefit from the exposure and mentorship of our career fire service personnel during this time for future and public service. This is not a permanent position in that you will not be spending a career as an EMT. What we're looking to do is have a goal for each EMT to be maximizing their exposure to the mentorship and the education that we can give them 
to enhance their career path. We know that the career path of an EMT can go multiple directions. It may go to firefighter paramedic. It may move to a different type of public service, AE. We could do other things related to lifeguard services. We could do other things related to inspections and investigations. The fire service as a whole has a plethora of opportunities of which you can expand into. The goal for these three years, though, is to have you expanding that, that knowledge base of yours so that you can move into the next step. Currently, we have 22 part-time limited term EMT positions. The term limited term and part-time is kind of confusing to some. The limited term is the three years. The part-time as that this recruitment is for, we call it 960 hours. It's actually 1,000 hours in a fiscal year. A fiscal year runs from July to July. This recruitment is for potentially eight of those limited term part-time spots. Now, part-time EMTs will be assigned normally to a 12-hour ambulance or a float duty shift. The 12-hour ambulance happens to be located at our fire station 7. If you are on our website, you'll see where fire station 7 is located. That ambulance currently is operating from a 9 a.m. to a 9 p.m. basis. You will be working with another EMT there, and you will be surrounded by 12 firefighter paramedics, engineers, captains and battalion chiefs, a truck, and an engine to help gain you that knowledge, that mentoring, that experience that you need. That part-time position that you see there eventually could move to a full-time position if it becomes available. Our normal transition is that we take our part-time personnel, and then as full-time positions come open, we're available for that. This recruitment, though, is for the part-time spot. Any questions on that? No. Okay. So what are our expectations as an EMT? First, mastering job duties and responsibilities. We need you to set goals. We want you to build good working relationships. We have to have you communicate effectively and professionally with both our internal and our external customers. You got to be able to provide written, verbal, and nonverbal communication style that resonates with the public. We're looking to you provide excellent customer service. We're looking for visibility to the community that exposes you and our department to more scrutiny. So we need to make sure that what you do, especially while you're wearing this uniform and you're in an ambulance, reflects positively both on the city of Oceanside and the fire department. We expect you to be a team player. And in that, attitude is everything. You need to come into this uh, position wanting to move to your next one and enjoying the mentorship that you're going to get out of it. You also have to understand our department's story. You got to look at our missions and our values. You got to understand the roles that the individual has in this department and your own role in both our department and the city as a whole in providing this customer service. So you see a couple of things in blue and red in here. This should bring you into understanding what the real big key things are that we're looking for here. Blue. Good representation, team players, missions and values, excellent customer service, communicating effectively and professionally, setting goals. Red, attitude is everything. And we're looking for a positive attitude. We move to the next slide. Oh, you got a question? Sorry. Go for it. How long is your EMT Academy? And do your EMTs do patient assessments? I'll take the second one, which was the patient assessments. Absolutely. Uh, one of the big goals that we had in the beginning of this program is that for you to become either a paramedic, a nurse, anything else outside of an EMT, you have to have a strong foundation of patient assessment. So as long as the patient's condition warrants you assessing them, that means it's a BLS level patient. Yes, we're expecting you to arrive on scene. We're expecting you to be able to assess the person. Of course, you're going to be surrounded by paramedics that will help guide you in that process. But honing that skills, absolutely. Uh, we do expect you to, to assess them. That's why I said you will not just walk in and take blood pressures. You're expected to actually improve your knowledge and your ability in assessments. For the second question, I'm going to defer to Jason Baker. Length of the Academy. Uh, good morning. The Academy is uh, consists of uh, two weeks. The uh, first week will be an introduction into um, some physical training, um, some classroom time. And the second week uh, is comprised of your field training. So going out into the field, doing your ride alongs and uh, just kind of getting an introduction into a firehouse. We have one more question. Okay. 
how long does an EMT have to spend as a part-time employee to be eligible for a full-time position? So the question is not time. Um, the question on the full time happens to be whether the spot is available. And then it also happens to be on where you are in the process of becoming a paramedic or a fire academy or your goals. Um, there is no length of time of which we will automatically advance a part time to full time. Uh, we do not convert part time positions into full time positions. As it stands currently, we only have uh, the 15 full time positions. So when those become available, you are interviewed and then your current uh, knowledge skills, your current uh, performance, they're all evaluated to see what's going to be the best fit for the full-time spot. Any other questions? None, okay. So our mission. Mission of the fire department is to meet and exceed the community needs and expectations through the preservation, protection of life, property, and the environment. It'd be good to get to know this mission. It would also be good for you to get to know our core values. We fulfill our mission when all employees work for our core values. One of ours is honor, respect, and excellence. To know what those mean, you have to understand that you want to be accountable for your professional and personal behavior and bring credit to organizations by your treatment of others. That's what honor is. Respect is that you will treat all people with respect and compassion. And excellence is that you're going to provide the highest level of service and strive to produce the best possible results and that you're prepared and available for service and action at all times. These are our core values in the department. You know, we put this slide in here in the presentation because you already know what the qualifications are. We walked through that. Mostly I'll walk through the understanding of the duties and the positions we're hiring for. We know the expectations of the position. We touched a bit on what the academy looks like. We support the mission and believe in it. So for most people, that's where this slide that's going to be sitting in there, that's kind of what they're going to be doing to get prepared up. You have already done that because you've already were in the application side. So you've kind of already seen some of this stuff in here. What we're going to step in from here is what the job posting actually looks like, the physical agility, EMS skills, and interview process. Are there any questions from what we've already covered? Say we were not able to apply for this application period due to not having a California driver's license. Is there an opportunity for ride-alongs as an EMT without being an employee in order to familiarize with San Diego County prior to applying? I would love to be able to give you the opportunities of ride-along. Um, unfortunately, we are still in uh, COVID, which has a major impact on every form of operation, this included. Uh, we will not be able to do ride-alongs uh, for any for the foreseeable future until we can work through this pandemic. Uh, so at current, the answer is no. Uh, once the pandemic has moved beyond and protective measures are in place, we will then kind of evaluate ride-alongs. We already have a process to apply to be able to do ride-alongs. And so the answer to you, yes, eventually it will. As it stands right now, the answer is no. We don't do ride-alongs for anybody currently. I do have a few more questions coming in. How important is experience when applying? You'll see in there that our, our expectation uh, when we, and I'll touch on the job bulletin. So please, even if you cannot apply right now, even if you're certain looking like maybe I don't reach this, I want you to follow through with the rest of this webinar because we're going to start touching things that are going to help you right there. So experience is one of the things that we do look at. We would like to have you have six uh, months of experience. We'd like to have you a year of experience. That would be phenomenal. But what we're also looking at is what are your goals? What have you done to establish those goals? And what have you been working on for those? So although experience is a recommendation, we definitely would like to see that. We also want to see what you are as a person, and therefore you're going to see other questions we ask. Experience as an EMT, maybe it might be on an ambulance service, but what other experiences could you have had? Could you have gone through a fire academy? Could you be a recruit somewhere else? Uh, could you have done uh, you know, uh, an explorer program? That is also experience. So I need you to make sure that when you're looking at this, you're broadening that experience to what are you doing in public service? That's some of the experience that we're looking for. Does the Oceanside Fire Department offer mock interviews for participants to hone their interview skills? Keep that question in your head. Uh, we're going to get to that one a little bit later. The answer is no. Um, we do not offer mock interviews. Uh, like I said, that's sometimes when we do ride-alongs, that does happen there. But because of the current COVID situation, we do not do ride-alongs. Uh, but we, we might have given you a little bit, some other resources that can help you with that along in this presentation. So we'll touch on that when we get to there. Are there any volunteer opportunities for candidates that might not have all the application requirements for this application cycle? 
On the city's human resource site, there is a volunteer. There are ways to sign up for volunteering on volunteer opportunities. Uh, so yes, there are obviously going to be ways to help out in the city and volunteer for the city. So the human resources website and the human resources department will be able to help kind of guide you through that process. Okay, let's jump into this. Like I said, and obviously if you're, if we've already hit the front part of this, and you're like, oh man, I just, I don't think I have the qualifications right now. That's okay. Stick with this part of it because that's part of goal setting. Sometimes you don't get it the first time, but the next time around, you want to make sure you are the most qualified applicant for it. So let's go through the rest of this. So the job interest card, well, we put this in here because uh, in, you know, over the past year, we've had a lot of people ask about job interest cards. Um, this is how you would put in a job interest card. It's actually a fairly simple process. Um, you literally just say what you're interested in. You make sure you have a very good email that you will have access to. And then for the next 12 months, as any jobs gets posted that's related to what you're interested in, it will notify you. Um, this, we brought you here to the city of uh, Oceanside's Human Resource, uh, which is a government jobs website. And you can see it's just a checkbox down there. You check, hey, I'm interested in fire and EMS or EMS, both. And uh, you put in your email. And from there, like I said, anytime a job is posted, you will be notified. So I would strongly suggest that if there is an interest you have in there, even if now you're looking at it going, well, maybe I'm interested in engineering or something else, put in the checks in there. And then once we post them, you will obviously be notified for it. So that job interest card covers every position the city of Oceanside has, and it flies out for it. Any questions on that? Okay. So we're going to talk about this in sequence. And the reason why so on this one, we're going to touch a couple of different questions on government jobs and creating an account. And the reason we're touching on this is that when we started talking about what the expectations to become an Oceanside Fire Department EMT, we said one of those things we want you to do is be goal oriented. As you'll learn about being goal oriented also means having a plan, making sure that that plan that you have is something that you can touch and it's tangible. It doesn't matter if the plan's on a computer or it's a piece of paper or it's just a sticky note that you stuck on the dashboard. The plan is something that you use to guide you through. Success is taking that plan and reviewing it and making sure that you're, you're, you're set for it. So what you're going to see us give you in here is a couple of those ideas of how to be the most successful. Is this the only way to do it? The answer is absolutely not. But this is what we've seen in the past that is the most successful. So what I'm going to talk about in here is governmentjobs.com and creating an account. Like I said, most of you got to this because we have a posting um, on the city's website for an EMT. You saw that, you click this link and you're good to go. But once we're saving this, the reason why I'm giving you governmentjobs.com and creating an account is that you can pre-fill this information yourself, even without having to apply. And by having this account set, you will be able to, when you're sitting down, put your work experience in here, put your education in here, add any additional certifications that you would normally have, put your references in here, this, as you will know, when you're filling out an application, most time takes the longest time. And it's the thing that you have to have structurally built. You have to know people's names. You got to know their phone numbers. You got to know their work addresses. You do need to know when you work there. And you probably need a good description of what that job was. Like what was your last position? To then have the job flyer post and now you rush to put this in there is not ideal. So one of the things we talk about is that you probably should create your government jobs account. And then you should be able to pre-fill that out. And by pre-filling this out, whenever you apply for a job, all of that pre-filled information carries over with you. So we're going to talk about this job posting that you saw, because obviously that's how you got to us as a webinar. And what you see in there, there's some big red thing, job posting, closing date, description, and question. So looking at that information when it posts is also the second step. You've already filled out a government uh, you've already filled out the gov job site. You already have all your information, your references, and your pointing there. Well, now what you want to do is you want to apply for something. So let's look at what this looks like on uh, gov jobs right now. We're going to go to uh, the actual EMT job posting. We're going to kind of touch on some things that are in there. So this is the human resource page. This is more than likely where you went to to find this link for us that you're uh, visiting with us today. And there's the EMT position posted. When you open the EMT position, any position that's posted in here, there's things that are going to naturally jump out at you. First is that closing date, 918 at 4 p.m. If you do not submit your application by 918 at 4 p.m., your application will not be accepted. If you submit it after 4 p.m., it will not be accepted. That is the closing date. So make sure that when you see these pop up and you see you want to apply, you need to know when the closing date is. And then ideally, you want to have a framework for what you're going to do next. 
So if you had already filled out this information, you already had all your references and everything in there, now your framework is to look at the description and see what they're asking for you in here. As we look at this description and we kind of walk down through there, you'll see that examples of duties. Well, in this PowerPoint, we covered our examples of duties. You'll see the minimum qualifications in here, the knowledge of first aid, the knowledge of uh, cardiopulmonary, the EMT scopes of practice. You'll also want to see the abilities to do in there and the experience and training. So this kind of gives you some good broad ideas of what we're looking for, minimum qualifications plus the experience. When you do get down to the license and certificates, it'll say in there what is required. You'll also see in there that possession of a San Diego County EMT certification as a condition of employment um, uh, must be obtained prior to completion of the Oceanside Academy. So that's where that term came from when we started, we started this webinar. When we were asking, like, well, what's in here to apply for this current position? Uh, that's what you have in there for that. Uh, you also see where it says you must attach copies of the required certification to the application and submit it by the application deadline. That's in bold for a reason. And then lastly, when you roll down to the bottom, you have this information session, which obviously you've logged into today. Um, you will see in there the working environments that are there, and then the selection process, what we're going to use next. And that has in there the PAT dates as possible. We may move those around if we have to, but we give you the suggested time uh, when we're thinking of making sure it's scheduled for you. As it becomes hardened, you would be notified if you were, ex if you were accepted, or your application was accepted and you were moving to the next process, you would then be notified of all those firm dates. And you also see the MT skill tests and OR boards. So really this job description or this, uh, I think it's scroll back up to the top on it. This long, long list, right? So this descriptions page is kind of a key thing to have. Our suggestion, print it. Print it out so that you can look at that. And that way, when you're applying for it, you know what we're asking. We put it all in here for you. The other thing that you'll see across there is benefits and questions. Um, what is interesting is that people sometimes get lost in description. They forget to look at questions. So if you're in here, take a look at the question. If it is asterisk, you're going to need to answer that. So when you apply, these are the questions we're going to ask you in your application. To have this uh, variable to you to think about, to collect, to get all the information together, is kind of key before you even press the word apply. That's going to kind of set you apart because then when you're in here, you'll already have the experience question that kind of scrolls down there. Do you have any additional experience, degrees, licensures? So you can see that you know, we broaden our experience question even in this application. Once you kind of have yourself set, you, you know what you're doing, and you click the apply button, then you will go through the government jobs application part. We'll get back to that in a second. Is there any questions on the posting, what you're really kind of zoning in on for this? Yep. We have two questions. I had someone ask for, ask if we could touch on the extra help position. Oh, job type. Yeah, <laughs> I got gotcha. you. So it, it, there, are, there are different types of job types in here. So when you see hourly extra help, when we discussed in the beginning that what we're hiring for is a limited term part-time employee, the job type is called an hourly extra help that you see right there. Um, so that's HR's term. I'll, I'll give it to Ama if there's something I'm missing in there. Okay, so yeah, uh, don't let that confuse you. Uh, hourly extra help is just the that a title that we use here. Um, however, it, all it means is that it's a part-time position limited to 1,000 hours per fiscal year. Again, the fiscal year begins uh, July 1 and it ends June 30th. And I think you'll be scheduled how many hours a week? No, we schedule around 18 to 20 hours a 18 week. 18 to 20 hours a week. So uh, we're looking to fill eight uh, part-time positions. So that's all, what, all that the hourly extra help means. I have another question. If I, am, if I currently have a full-time EMT position at a private ambulance company, is it still possible to be considered for the OFD part-time position? As long as you can schedule around it, absolutely. We do schedule you on the part-time position. This is not a fill-in basis, so you're actually given a schedule we, which we expect to have you here. Um, so as long as you can schedule that, we don't, you know, if you're working for a different agency, we understand that. Uh, you know, you would be able to still apply. You would also still be able to consider and yes, you would also still be able to work. Um, obviously, like I said, we do have a set schedule in there, a calendar. Um, and so you would be given shifts that we're expecting you to be here for. So if you can move the other job around that, absolutely. I have one more question. 
What is the anticipated start date? The anticipated start date for us is going to be in January. Uh, that's going to give us an opportunity to go through the application process, as you saw. Then it's going to give us a chance to go through the physical agility. It's going to give us a chance to go through the interviews, which will normally end um, by the end of October with selection being decided uh, pretty much in November. Once you're selected, we'll also have to go through backgrounds. You'll have to go through medicals. And those, uh, as we learned, take around a month to two to finish up. So the academy is slated for January. Uh, which means that you would have to have two weeks available at least in there because that is a Monday through Friday, uh, two week sessions, and then you would be put on a schedule. So January is where we're slating for. That's it. Okay. You back to the slide. So we kind of talked about job postings in there. Like I said, we touched on that. So the next two slides really are kind of to help when we're not here or we can't answer it to kind of give you your suggestions. You'll see as we started covering that. We're reviewing you for completeness, concise answers, and appropriate written responses, because it's important all those things that are vital to patient care records. So when you complete your application, that's when we say take the most amount of time actually making sure your references are correct, uh, making sure that your descriptions of what your previous job are, your experiences are correct. Um, that's what these helpful suggestions are here to do. It's to just kind of guide your applicational process so that it's the best foot you're putting forward. Because in reality, it's the first foot you're gonna be putting forward for us is your application. That's what we're gonna be reviewing you by. When you talk about when we went to, oops, sorry, can you advance it one more? Or right, is there a question? Good. Can you advance the slide? So here is the application piece. And the reason why we put this in here is it's to give you some really big things that if you have, if you have not already written your plan out as to how you're going to be successful, this is things you must be successful on. You need to click the apply, you got to post for it. You have to create a profile. Um, you need to make sure you answer all your questions uh, that are asterisks in there. Yeah, if you do not attach them, you will be removed from consideration once the application period closes. So we just kind of give you the big bullet points of, hey, when you press apply, you really need to walk through this. GovJobs uh, as a website is actually kind of nice because as you already saw on the right-hand column over there, I gave you a snapshot of uh, what that, oops, sorry, I'm gonna give you a snapshot of that. And that gives you your info, your work experience. That's the stuff that you already put in there. So it's already checked. And as you move down that, you'll see that if you don't answer it, it's going to leave it as a red mark. It won't, it'll not let you, it'll tell you that you're missing things in there. You'll see the attachments. So you can always see what has been attached. Uh, so you're going to be able to handle everything within the application process itself. There's no expectation that if you attach something that you're then going to have to mail in a cert outside of that. Everything needs to be attached and inside the application itself. And once again, like I said, if you do not attach them, you are going to be removed from the consideration. So spend some time in the gov, uh, government jobs site right there with your profile, getting it correct, and just spend some time making sure that you have everything complete before the uh, close of the day. Any other questions? We do have a question. Someone said, I've already applied, but I can't remember if I attached all of the required documents. Is there an email address to send attachments just to be sure? Uh, so what you can do is on government jobs, uh, go back in there, uh, log back in, and you will see a record of all the applications you submitted. So you can see all of the required attachments. Um, if, you are, if you're missing one and you realize, darn, I did not attach my driver's license or the EMT uh, California certification, what you can do is you can email Alma Sanchez. My email address is asanchez at oceansideca.org. Or you can give me a call at 760-435-3511. We have one additional question. If you just obtained your dri ambulance driver certificate, will attaching your temporary ambulance certificate suffice for the requirements when applying? I'll kick that back to Alma. Uh, <clears throat> well, what you can do is uh, submit what you have. Uh, we but we, we don't review applications until the closing date. However, um, if you want us to um, give, give it a quick look, uh, we can probably do that. Uh, however, we can't guarantee that we have the time to do, all, to do that. But um, if you wanna shoot me uh, what you have, I can review it and let you know um, if that will work. Uh, so again, just shoot me an email. Uh, again, my email address is asanchez at oceansideca.org.
I can send that as a message to all the panelists as well. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah, so she's going to give you her contact information. Any other questions? Okay. Let's say, uh, can we advance? So waiting and preparing, that's probably the worst part. You put your application in, the closing date happened. You're wondering why at five o'clock you didn't get notified. Uh, it takes us a long time to process the applications. Um, what that is, is the, uh, after the application period has closed, the process is going to be used to determine the most qualified applicant and is internal. Uh, you're not going to be advised of what that looks like. We're going to, after the closing date, go through all of them. And then we're going to, obviously, if it's an incomplete application or those missing the required certifications, you're not going to continue in the process. Uh, only those applicants that are appropriately qualified candidates will be notified that they're moving on with the process. I'm going to respond. I'm going to let Alma talk to that about. I just want to um, add that it, it's the applicant's responsibility to make sure that you attach all of the required certifications. Once the uh, position closes, uh, you cannot submit any additional certifications. Um, and it's also uh, best to attach everything at the time of application submission to avoid your certs getting lost or misplaced and HR not receiving them. So again, it's your responsibility as an applicant to ensure that your application package is complete. So while, while, you're, while we're in this process, what do you get to do? Uh, you know, some people just sit there and they worry about it. They're like, ah, it comes up next. What we put in here is what you should be doing. Uh, you actually should be sitting there and you should be preparing for the next stages. If you are selected, the next two stages are going to have to be interview and skills and a physical agility test. So while you're waiting to find out if you're going to be notified, that should be what you should, should be preparing for. Questions? Any? So EMT physical abilities test. The EMT position requires physical strength and agility to lift, carry heavy objects. When you actually printed out the description, you'll see a lot of this was already written in there. Um, and that's because in our system, we are going to expect you to carry gear, which is airway bags, medical boxes, stair chairs. You're going to go, be going up and down stairs, moving patients. You're going to be assisting patients to a gurney. You're going to be carrying patients on a backboard. It's a very strenuous job. And we expect you to both be in good physical condition and be able to handle the workload of that physical job. Therefore, the physical ability or physical abilities test is to make sure that you can handle the normal course of our job. It is broken apart into four events, but it is done sequentially. You will have three minutes to complete those four events. And those four events happen to be a stair climb with an EMT medical box, which weighs about 15 pounds, and an airway bag that weighs 15 pounds. Those will be in each arm. Then from there, you're going to carry a patient with a partner from a gurney. It's a mannequin that weighs about 154 pounds. And then you're going to bring and return a stair chair, which is about 25 pounds, from a simulated third floor. And the last, you're going to lift the patient on a backboard, and you're going to carry to a gurney. It's the same mannequin that weighs about 154 pounds. So to help with this, we place the video on our website so you can see what that PAT looks like. We're going to walk through that video. I'm going to narrate a bit of things in there just for you to pay attention to. Um, but before we start that video, is there any questions on the PAT? None. Okay, let's take a look at the video. So the key thing to notice on the video is this may not be where we actually do the test at, but it happens to be an ocean side. So if you are doing training and you want to have a set of stairs, great place to do them at. You're going to start with a stair climb with EMS gear. As you notice, one hand has one, the other hand has the other. They're going up the stairs. Are you able to skip stairs on the way up? Absolutely. Just be safe. You're carrying the gear up to the top of the flights right there. There's a cone that you're going to come around, and then you're going to start coming down the stairs. You cannot miss steps on the way down the stairs. You must carry the gear with you safely, and you must come down the stairs just like this individual in this, symbol, this uh, sample video is doing. Once you're down at the bottom of the stairs, you're going to set the equipment down. So when we did this video, the things that we wanted to do is capture what you probably shouldn't do. So the two things that are critical failures is putting the gear down before you make it through the whole evolution or dropping it. And the second one is skipping steps on the way down. The next thing is a patient carry with a partner. You will be taking the top part of the patient. Your partner will be carrying the lower legs. So you can see a demonstration as they're wrapping it around. You're moving them from what would be simulating as a bed. You're walking around an object. And you're going to be putting them back what would be simulating as a bed, which would be our gurney. Um, most of our houses are too small to even bring the gurney into. So we're going to be carrying patients. You can see in this video right here that it gives you some techniques that you could use for it. 
Uh, but obviously the thing you cannot do is you cannot drop the person on the ground before completing the evolution. The third one is a stair chair carry. Uh, the stair chair, it's not the weight, it's obviously that you can see the individuals carrying it on one side or the other, it doesn't matter if you're left or right. Same thing going up the stairs, it does not matter if you skip stairs on the way up, but you're gonna be carrying that object on only one arm or only one side. You gotta carry it all the way up to the top of the third floor. Once again, you're gonna be coming around and bringing it back down. That stair chair, we spend a lot of time taking people down from second and third floors with that stair chair. Sometimes we bring it up there and we decide we don't need that stair chair, we need a backboard. Uh, so the stair chair and carrying it up and down safely without damaging the stair chair or hurting yourself is important to us. As you can see, when he comes down and he puts it down, he's gonna move on to his next evolution. But a failure would be to drag the stair chair up it or to drop the stair chair while you're going up it. Both those would be failures. And last is what we call backboard patient care. Uh, so the way this is simulated, obviously you're lifting just the head portion and you're walking the backboard to it. This is from a trauma victim that we've gotten out of a car that we need to lift them up and put them on a gurney. So the simple thing there is to obviously walk them over and that's the last evolution. Don't drop the patient. And the dropping a patient's bad. That's the PAT. It'll be completed in three minutes. Like I said, the video is there as a sample as to give you what you could be expected from it. Any questions on the video? Okay, let's click back to the slide. So what we've provided for you uh, when I like said on the website and this in, in this presentation was we provided for you some suggestions on how to get ready for that. Uh, the video is a good example of showing you what it is. This is where we put the, oops, sorry about that. Just clicking in your, can you get you to move it? There we go. So what we put in here is, is preparing for the PFA team. This is truly helpful suggestions in here for it. Uh, you can review this, like I said, this is up on our website, uh, so you can take a look in here. The, the thing is, you're gonna have to make sure that you're physically fit. Uh, that means having a fairly good workout program that involves both the cardio capacity and physical strength. So these gave you some suggestions that we had uh, to how to do that and how to kind of get prepared for it if you're not. Uh, some things that you can work on. Uh, they are only suggestions, obviously it's not a workout program that we are, are giving you. Uh, furthermore, if you don't think you're able to do that or you are worried about it, then you definitely need to make sure you consult with a physician prior to beginning any exercise program, including this one. If you don't know how to move his weights or use weights, then obviously reach out to a professional to get some help with that. Any questions on the PAT? All right. So the PAT is one piece of it. Uh, sorry, let me get your advance. Oh, yeah, can I make sure? Yeah. Oh, okay. If selected, I, I am currently enrolled in a part-time fire academy that meets on Saturdays. Would the PAT date be changed? No. Uh, the PAT date is, it, it's not going to be changed. Um, at least the one we currently have in there, I believe we have secured. I'm going to refer that to Jose McNally. Good morning, guys. Uh, no, it's going to be scheduled for Saturday, October 3rd, and it's going to be pretty much an all-day event. Any other questions? Okay. The next two things we're going to talk about is your EMT skills assessment, and then we're also going to discuss the, you know, your interview things. We put these two slides in here for reference points for you. The biggest thing I need you to take away from these two slides, and this is getting near the end of our, our presentation for it, is that the purpose of us providing this is only really information. It's to kind of guide you through that vast thing that's called the internet that can give you a bunch of resources and just kind of hone you in on things that are beneficial to you becoming an OSHA Fire Department EMT. So what was asked in the beginning is, do we actually do, do we require you as an EMT to do your skills? Absolutely. We require you to do your patient assessment skills. Are right, you do your oxygen skills. We require you to do all of the skills of which you have been certified to do. So when you're looking through what we give you in these last two slides, which is your skills assessment and your interview assessment, recognize that the links that we provide here can give you information on what those skills are supposed to be. Uh, one of the links in here is obviously to the county, and that's a good thing to look at because the scope of practice defines what you're required to do while you're here in San Diego County. The second link down there on the bottom is the National Registry site, which goes through the psychomotor skills that you should be able to perform. So if you're looking at getting ready for a skills assessment, I would say focus in there. That's a good place to start with. 
Do not believe that gear or the, the different types of gear are going to be complicating to you. We normally make it so on test day you, when you are getting ready to go into a skills assessment that the gear is available there for you to preview before you have to use it and ask any questions if it's something you're unfamiliar with. So the intent of the skills assessment is not to have the gear actually be cumbersome to you, but rather so you can actually demonstrate successfully what the skills should be regardless of the gear. So we do have the gear available there prior to you actually using it so that you can become familiar with it on testing. Any questions with the skills assessment? Okay. The last was this. Uh, this was an interview thing. And we talked about this because if you haven't figured out yet, uh, we're expecting you to do a lot of talking to patients and a lot of talking to coworkers and a lot of talking to the community. That is interviewing. Uh, that is what we're looking for you is that to be a good communicator and to communicate effectively with both patients, nurses, doctors, paramedics, uh, employees and the community. You gotta be able to do that in a stressful situation where people can sometimes be screaming at you, where people can sometimes be angry, where people can sometimes be intoxicated. You have to be able to keep your presence of mind in every emergency situation. That is essential as an OFDA EMT. So how do you help practice that interviews? You know, what are the questions? I can tell you that the questions that you're looking for are not going to be in anything that we provide here. What this is, this is just to give you a purpose of the information only for that. Now, the websites that we provided below, the ND, the Glassdoor, and the Simply, um, those are fairly commercial websites that allow, uh, they, they take applications that are available, they put it out for you, but they also have resources in them on like, hey, what was common interview questions? What was common answers? What did those look like? I would strongly suggest that you do look through those kind of interview questions. Uh, the resources that are available on the internet to kind of prepare for an interview, they're pretty, pretty uh, robust. So getting prepared for the interview and what you're looking for. Don't focus as much on a question or getting the question right. Focus on actually communicating effectively, talking to people, engaging with them. That's the goal of the interview. Questions on it? Really? No questions on interview? Okay. That actually is getting near the end of our webinar. When we get to this last slide right here, this last slide looks very busy. Um, I'm going to have uh, Tierra go back to our website because this slide is intended to be busy. It's actually not something that you're supposed to print and have available to you, although you can as a checklist to be ready. But if you look at it from our website, you'll see that all of the links that we are providing in this PowerPoint are actually in this check sheet. This check sheet was designed so that if you're not familiar with kind of creating a plan to move forward, um, this could help you with that. It says, do I have the qualification? I want to know when the job will be open. I want to be ready to apply. I want a job poster. This is one of those things when we said we are, our goal with hiring an EMTs is to mentor them to the next level. This helps you get prepared for it. And it's a very good summary of what the position actually looks like. Like I said, on our website, this is posted there. Um, it will stay there throughout the year. So that as you're, if you are unsuccessful right now of being qualified for it, you could still refer back to the website and you can reach out to it. That's going to conclude the webinar portion of that. Is there any questions? in general? Yes. Someone said, thank you for the information. Is there a recruitment team or fire personnel we can reach out to with questions that may come up in the coming weeks as they come up after this webinar? There's always a recruitment team. We're all here. Uh, if you haven't realized, almost every single public safety employee, uh, be it a firefighter, a a uh, captain, an engineer, a battalion chief, uh, we are all actively recruiting every time we get out there in the public. Uh, to, to reach any of us to ask specific questions would probably not help you uh, because once we actually start the process, which is what we're in to recruit, we actually have a confidentiality. We're not going to be able to explain or discuss what the next steps of the process would be. So reaching to anybody that happens to be in this room, besides for HR questions for Alma, you know, or general questions um, for myself or training regarding what we're presenting here, uh, probably would not be beneficial to you. It's not gonna solve that. Does that mean that you can't reach any firefighter that you know? Absolutely. Uh, like I said, everybody, everybody that's a firefighter, everybody that's in public service, they all are here to help. That's our entire goal. And so yes, we do reach out to help somebody. Um, you, my office number, you know, I'll give that here. Um, it is, or sorry, I'll give you my email, my city's email. You can reach out to me directly from there if you have any questions. You know, it's more specific. If I can answer them, I can. If not, I'll tell you that obviously I'm not able to. It is L Keener. And that's at uh, oceansideca.gov. It's actually .org. <laughs> Sorry, oceansideca.org. Perfect. I got that gov thing stuck in my head. Okay.
someone asked if the slides will be posted so we can have access to the direct links. Absolutely. Website, when we began the, this webinar, that website of ours, it has everything that we went through today in there. Minus one. I mean, obviously, we changed the uh, orientational uh, slide. That is unique. We kept that out of there. But it, you'll see that this entire presentation has been sitting in there. So yes, all of the links that you see in here, they've been on that slide. This one that we're ending with, that's actually a separate document. It's a PDF that's in there. And it just says that checklist to become an EMT. And yes, all those links are active in there too. So absolutely. And that will stay in place throughout the year. Um, we don't just bring that down when we're finished with recruitment. We'll keep that in place because obviously that prepares people to move forward. So yes, all that's available on the website. I do have a few more questions. In regards to the interview, in your eyes, what personal qualities or attributes are characteristic of a successful candidate? Well, you've been on this webinar, so all you have to do is when we're finished with this, just watch the video again. You'll see in here that we have all participated in what we believe is the best interview style. You, you need to look at the description that was given to you in the jobs. You need to look at the questions that are asked for the application. You need to obviously view the resources we have on our website right here. And yeah, take a look at this video again. I think in there you'll find the context of what we're looking for uh, as an employee. For the skills assessment, will it be a full psychomotor exam like the one completed during an EMT course or just a test of a few skills? It can be all. Uh, you know, when you start looking at what skills are required, it is good to take a look at the same links that we gave you in there as to what is required by the California, or sorry, what is required by the County of San Diego in your scope of practice. I would take a look in there. Um, I would be prepared to do all or any portions of those. That's just good preparation. Uh, so, you know, to narrow it down, like this might be this one or that might be that one. I wouldn't go into it in that uh, fashion. I would go into it in the other fashion is I'm going to be qualified. I have the skill set to do this. I can take any responsibility that you throw at me. But I would be ready to be able to complete any and all of the skills that are there. How often does o Oceanside hire EMTs? When is the next application cycle likely to open? So it is a, we don't open on a regular basis. We're not going to be uh, applying every single year. Uh, right now, we, our last application process was when we re-began this EMT program, and that was a year ago. Uh, we can't guarantee that next year we would open the process again. It really is based on the need and the number of employees that we have. Once we have vacancies open, we will open the process again. I, I wouldn't count on it being, you know, having occurring on a regular basis. I would more, you know, if you're interested, I'd put the job interest card in and just recognize you'll need to update that as it becomes available. Okay. So to end this thing, uh, first, thank you for viewing the chat. Uh, like I said, this is, uh, this is our first time ever doing this. Uh, it, it is very helpful. Um, I feel like it's a little more interactive, and that's absolutely what we wanted to be able to get from you is to be interactive. Hopefully this video can give you that. Like I said, we're going to save it. We'll put it up on the website. Uh, we've given you the resources to reach out to if you have specific ones for this job hiring. Uh, if there's any other suggestions or comments, you'll also see them down there as an email you can send us. Please let us know so we can improve. Uh, and thank you. Oh, hold on. Uh, Baker, Jason Baker is going to add something else. Uh, for those of you applying and, and going through this process, just to clarify what you're going to be responsible for in the uh, skills component during the testing process, it, it, please refer to the National Registry uh, skills sheets, and that's what we will be testing you from. Anything else? I don't see any other questions, but I see quite a few people thanking thanking us for taking the time to do this okay thank you alma thank you training thanks everybody else